Yo, what is up, Crocs and Clan members, anime fans, and others who have some fun this video? I'm Sora's Crocs, and today we're gonna be doing another anime time with Sora's on, and it's gonna be on Dear S. Let's go. So, right now it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, so I apologize if I start to ramble or if my words start going crazy, uh, and I start not making any sense. I apologize, it's really, really late. So, Dear S, it's probably one of the weirdest shows I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it's not the worst. That title, that that title, is forever known as Dragon Drive. That show, to me personally, is the worst anime I've ever seen, and probably will ever see. We'll, but we'll, we'll 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 wait and see what happens. But essentially, Dear S, the concept behind it, I honestly didn't understand until the the theory started to explain it. And I actually don't like the the back the concept in the back, which is essentially slavery. Uh, the way the series went off, uh, you have four. There, there's a lot of characters in the show, but there's only really four you need to pay attention to. Uh, the main character Takuya, Takuya, uh, Ren, Nanako, and Mew. Those those are literally the only four characters you need to pay attention for the most part in the series. Yes, there's other characters that get involved and at certain points you need to be, you know, be paying attention to them, but for the most part, they're only relevant to that one particular episode or they're gone for most of the time and you don't see them till the very end. Uh, for example, there's this one character who's in every episode, but he's completely pointless until the second to last one. So that, that's why I mean like, only pay attention to those four. So the concept is, you have Ta Takuya, Takuya, who is the typical anime stereotype guy who, you know, they're in school, right? He's the typical lazy, doesn't pay attention in class, doesn't know anything, stupid male main character. But he has a job. At least that's a thing. Uh, he does live by himself, kind of. His neighbor, Nanako, who is his neighbor and childhood friend, Basically, is like his his quote unquote guardian because she always has to like show up and like wake him up in the morning. She's always buying him alarm clocks so that like, there's like multiple alarms in his room so they ring at the around the same time to see if the noise will wake him up because he's too lazy to get up and or he's one of those deep sleepers, you know, where like they really don't wake up no matter how much noise. It's kind of like that. So they're humans, right? And then you have. Ren and Mew, they're aliens, so they're called Dear S. They basically what happened is like a year, a, a little bit less than a year prior to the beginning of the series, there was a spaceship, it ended up crashing into Earth, you know, aliens were in there, and they, were, they ended up being adopting the name Dear S. So, you know, Dear Space Aliens or Dear, I don't even know what the heck the, the whole Dear is. Anyways, the point is, they're supposed to have friendly relations. That that was a whole. They were a peaceful cre. They were a peaceful race, and they wanted to make good with the humans. Uh, and for the most part, that's actually worked out just fine. Japan is one of the first ones to integrate DRS into their culture, essentially where they have like the rights to have like DRS actually go into schools and learning about you know the, about Earth essentially. Uh, so they they're they're given the right to you know go to school study. Uh, be a lot, be alongside humans. Actually, live with a like, uh, a human. They're, they're basically like homestay type of thing, where they 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 the DRS gets assigned a home, and they go to that home, and they're the humans are supposed to like kind of they're, they're supposed to learn from the humans essentially. Now, Ren is a defect essentially, because the way they explain it later uh, later on throughout the series is that. The, the aliens themselves, Dear S themselves, are a slave race. They're manufactured to be slaves for other other species, essentially. Uh, they, they're, they're basically molded into a... a they're, they're essentially slaves. That's basically, they, they say that all the freaking time. They're practically slaves. And so... They're supposed to act like slaves serving their master. So yes, they they're, have their home stay and they do go to school. They learn the culture. They learn languages. They can learn languages like that, essentially. 
uh, but they're supposed to serve, essentially. That is, that it's supposed to be one of those hidden lines, though. Like, the DRS, the, the higher-ups, essentially, don't want, that, don't want humans to know that they are a slave race, but they want their, the DRS to act like slaves, kind of like on the down low. Like, be, be one of those, like, just be really nice and really compelled to help to disguise the fact that you're supposed to be their slave. That that's based to the base premise, and I actually didn't like the whole slavery thing because we all know how bad slavery is in our history. So it, it was a very touchy subject. Talking about for all intents and purposes makes it, they, they they're supposed to make a contract with their master. The master is technically a kiss, and Ren, being a defect, actually escaped from the ship when she wasn't supposed to. Made the contract with Takaya and then became his slave without his knowledge. He he didn't know. Like he, he was completely out of the boot. Like he was a what the heck. And he is a character who even though he's a bumbling idiot who doesn't really I already explained what what kind of character he is. He doesn't like the idea of master and slave. So when because like I said, that's supposed to be a secret, but Ren iterates it all the time and she says it to everybody this is my master and yada 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 because she's defect she's the, she she's not supposed to be in public basically like at the end of the series they, they say that they're supposed to be molded and then sent out so but then there's those that kind of the, the process goes wrong somewhere and then they they have like serial numbers and if they have like zeros in the front they're automatically a defect and they're put back on the shelves and frozen for all eternity because they're they're not used they're they're, they're not gonna work essentially. Tiger doesn't believe in it. In fact, he gets flustered every time she even mentions the concept of masters and slavery because he doesn't think that way. Now, even though I don't like Tiger, I like that about him. You know, the fact that he tries to go against his whole. First of all, he's completely confused most of the time, so that also does that also helps the case. He's he's ignorant, but he he has that type of heart, especially when Ren tries to push herself onto him because you know she senses his desires, right? Like she she's able to sense his his what what is it like basically emotions, uh, desires and hormone levels, yeah. That that's how crazy it is, uh, and she actually tries to throw herself onto him, and he's like, "Whoa, no! You know, only people who love each other should be doing this type of thing." Basically, he he goes the aspect of relationships. That's the only time you should do any of this stuff, which is fine. Like that, I like that about him. Uh, Miu is uh, she's actually like. Uh, Okay, dear. Like so she, she was, she got all the check marks everywhere, uh, and she has her whole host family, and she actually ends up trying to help out Ren because she doesn't have the basic skills that you're supposed to learn because she's a defect. Uh, and so throughout the series, it's basically just like stuff that happens around them, and Takaya having to deal with all the Ren's shenanigans because Ren doesn't know any better, so she. Obviously, she makes mistakes every single episode, multiple times an episode, because she doesn't understand basic stat stuff. She's like she gets lost easily, uh, and she does things on or she does way too many unorthodox things, and she's always blabbering a bunch of stuff that she shouldn't be saying, which flush, flush, frustrates. Takaya to the point where he gets mad most of the time and yells at her and then people get on his case because he's yelling at Ren even though they don't know that it, it's crazy okay it's just pure just craziness also the teacher in the classroom I don't even know how that chick is still working she is basically a sexual predator these are all high school students and she comes to class Pretty much naked. Well, I mean, she does have like she has her bra and her her panties and and all that stuff. But she's most of the time she's freaking naked and she's always she you you gotta know what kind of read books they read in classroom erotics that she made that that's like she should have been fired day one. This is uh, this is 
child abuse. It, it was just, it was disturbing. To be honest, she made it funny though. I, I mean, I laughed a lot when she did her her stuff because it, it kind of made like it, it's kind of like a, it unified everybody in the classroom when she said something or she did something. Like everything would go away from the situation because she would do or say something like overly sexualized towards her students, and then everybody's like, really? Like. I don't know. It was it. It was funny. It, I I thought it was funny. I, but I also thought it was weird and strange. And I'm pretty sure that I, if I was the, the principal, doesn't even do anything in the entire series. The dude is always outside watering flowers, and he never says anything. That's the weirdest part. He never says anything. So he's like the most awkward character in this entire show. But if I was him, I would have fired her day one if I had, if I knew about any of this. And she even acts like that when she's in his office. It's like, oh, I don't even understand. It's she does so many things all the time. And there's the, there's actually one episode where they go to a spa, and she shows up, and then like there's a news reporter because the spa is new or, or it's not a it's 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 a bathhouse technically speaking. There is an interview because it's a very, it's a brand new. It was just finished built. Uh, it's a nice place. It's really big. So there was like news reporters and stuff trying to get to, you know feel the place. And she just gets all because she she goes into men's areas and just goes and takes off her towel. She's basically trying to get people to stare at her. That's her whole goal in this entire show. She wants attention because she's she's. She sees herself as a beautiful woman, and she wants her body to be appreciated. So it's it's funny, but it's awkward. Which brings me to another character. Like I said, all these characters are random, and you really shouldn't pay attention to them. But they keep showing them to you, so you honestly you notice them. There's this one guy, who, the one that I said is only relevant to the second to last episode. I don't even know the dude's name, but he's like he's one of those pretty boys. Like I don't know, like I think think. Think high school. There's always that one guy or that one girl who everybody or at least the majority of the people are attracted to because they're like the hottest guy or girl in the school or in the class or whatever. They're like the main focal point. Like everybody wants to be around that one person or all the people from the opposite gender want to date that one particular person. That's what he symbolizes. He's the pretty boy that all the girls want. And every time they showed him off, they showed him off with a random girl and there's always like he was putting moves on them. They wanted it though, so it, it honestly didn't matter. But it was always it was always like that one thing where they they show you both of them, and you know that they're gonna do it, but they don't show you anything because they're just randomly showed off. They just randomly show him off for no freaking reason. And like I said, he's only relevant the second to last episode after Ren and Takuya have another fight in the classroom, and he leaves. Like, Taka is pissed, so he leaves, and Ren feels bad, and, like, she ends up finding the room where that dude was, and then he started hitting on her, and he was, because she was talking about how she felt bad, because every time she did something, she did something wrong, and Taka was mad, and all this other stuff, and how she wanted to do it with Taka, but she felt like she had no experience, and he was like, oh, I'll give you some experience, and I'm like, and then that's, the, the, that's the, the only purpose. Because she didn't even do it with him because Takeya shows up and then they have another fight and then she leaves and it, it was ridiculous. Like, that was the only purpose. Like, literally, the only purpose was just for them to show him hitting on Ren so that Takeya could show up, get upset, realize that he likes her, and then move on. Like That was the only purpose for the guy and it was the stupidest reason. I mean, I, this show was just stupid in so many levels. I don't even understand how I finished it. I mean, then again, it was really short. It was only like 13 episodes. But, I mean, it has its moments. It does. But, for the most part, it's really awkward. And I I really don't like the backwards, I, the, you know, the whole mindset of slavery and all that stuff. So, I don't know. If you guys feel like you it sounds interesting or maybe you just want to see the teacher naked, that's you, know, that's you guys. Okay, you go right ahead. Um, I'm not going to do ratings anymore. I said that, I think, in the last anime time. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Swords Croxon, and I'll see you guys in future videos.